Okay, it is week three at the Takis Dairy Farm, and today we're with Dustin Takis, Josie's brother, and uh, Dustin helps run the farm, whether it be driving the tractor, feeding cows, making cheese, curds, you name it. Everybody at the farm really, uh, it's an all hands on deck farm. And Dustin, we're at week three, we're at our first again here in the United States. How are you feeling in your automated barn? Um, really good. So we're, we're just kind of rounding week two, kind of in the middle of week two. And we can see the progression. Things are getting a lot easier. Um, we're getting more sleep than week one and towards the end of week one. Um, the cows are making strides. We can see that. And uh, we're getting more from, you know, going into this, this, is, this has all been new to us as, as well as for the cows. So it was a transition and a learning curve for us. So we're getting more comfortable with the, the astronauts and the vector and the collectors, because that was kind of all introduced to us all within a two week period when we first ran the cows in there. So it's just becoming more familiar with the terminology and the equipment. And, you know, we're just a lot more comfortable going into week two with, with all the equipment that we have here. So it's a, it's a lot easier for us. So basically you guys have a fully automated barn and one of the machines is known as a um, collector. What does a collector do? Yeah, so we have three collectors. It is essentially just a manure robot vacuum. And our barn, uh, you know, a lot of barns are either pushed out uh, manually with a rubber tire scraper, maybe when the cattle are run onto the holding area. Um, or maybe they have a um, manure scraper just through the alleys, but these are little robots, kind of like a Roomba, I think most people uh, refer to them as when they come and see them. And it just drives around on a programmed route, predetermined programmed route, and uh, sucks up the manure, brings it back to a centralized pit where it dumps that, refills its water tank, and then goes back to its charger, and then charges while it waits for its next program route. And it just keeps repeating that over and over again. And how often does it go out and um, pick up the manure? I mean, what's the charge ratio to working versus charging? Um, you know, we're, we're still kind of learning a lot of this stuff, but um, from just being out in the barn for the last two and a half weeks, um, we'll have two of ours. So we have three, three collectors, like I said, but they share two dump stations. So usually we'll have two go out simultaneously on different routes and then dump, use both dump stations. And then after those are back um, on the charger, that third one will go out on a route so they're not intersecting each other and um, not crossing paths. And the, I would say the typical route they go out on is anywhere from 12 to 18 minutes. So they're, they're sucking up manure on a, a predetermined route and then once they're back, they're charging for at least another 45 minutes, and then they repeat that cycle nonstop. And each, each uh, collector has four different routes they do. So they just go right down the row, route one, two, three, and four. And then when they're done with that, it's, it cycles back through again. So kind of hands off, just let them do their thing. And uh, it's, it's really kind of neat to watch. What is uh, your daily maintenance on those machines? Um, so we, the, there hasn't really been a ton. It's kind of just kind of looking over them. Um, the, the ultrasonic sensors on them are kind of tucked underneath uh, on the side of the scraper. So they're kind of protected, but um, they, they can get manure splashed on them. And so you might, you might get a, a warning saying the ultrasonic sensor is dirty. So you always want to check, make sure that's clean because that's, that's uh, telling it where it is based off the location of the walls and the curbs. Um, just making sure it's in operation. We've kind of, uh, we've been playing with it a lot in terms of routing and whether we're going to turn the water on or versus have it off based on the consistency of the manure and whether it's going along a feed alley versus a um, curb along the free stalls. So we're, we're early on, we're, we're getting quite a bit of water where we didn't necessarily need it, I didn't think. So we're shutting those, pre some routes off just taking the water, shutting the water off because it's, it's liquefied enough to where we don't need it. So we've kind of been playing around with that. But other than that, it's just kind of 
giving giving them a once over, making sure everything looks all right, checking the the log to see if there's any alarms or um, and just kind of letting them do their thing. Great. Uh, as as you said, the cows and fetching and how are visits to the robots right now, the milking robots? They're improving. Yeah. So we're still we're still out here. We've been doing it four times a day, trying to do it every six hours just to kind of keep ahead of keep ahead of the curve. Um, but we're also trying at this point, we're trying to switch it up and not make it consistent for the cattle. Um, that was kind of a tip we got early on from a lot of different uh, farms saying, hey, don't try to switch things up. Don't do it at the same day. So we're trying to do that a little bit and it seems to be working a little bit. We're finding ones that are on our fetch list, just giving them that extra hour, hour and a half. There, there are some of that are coming in and getting milked on their own. So I think by switching it up, um, that's a good, good, good tip and good advice that we, that we learned. Awesome. Well, as we celebrate our first uh, American holiday weekend, I hope you guys is your life is a little bit different this holidays versus last year's. And as we look down, down the road that, uh, your time in the barn is a little bit less around the holidays. There's one thing for sure with dairy producers, uh, holidays and uh, weddings are always planned around milking time. And so this weekend, as we celebrate the holidays, what does the, what does the barn routine look like for you all now with the robots? Well, our, our family holidays have always kind of been local and around here. We haven't really ever traveled. A lot of the family has come back towards this area, but it's going to be another low key holiday for us. We'll, we'll have it with our immediate family. Um, we still got a lot going on at the farm here with this transition. So we're going to keep our focus on that still and still be able to sneak away and celebrate things. But um, yeah, it's, it's not really much has changed. We're still, we're still focused on the cows and making sure they're, taken care of and every all the equipment's up and operating and um it's it's a low-key thing it's kind of the way our life has always been so very good nothing better than family time on the farm yeah well thanks again for sharing your story with us this week dustin and we look forward to talking to you all about your update next week all right sounds good thank you